What's up, Grove Landers? We are in Salem, Massachusetts all day today. All day. So I just got a self-guided walking tour through an app. We're gonna do that first. Um, after that, do some shopping. Uh, there's uh, all kinds of museums, wax museum. There's an international monster museum, I believe, right here in Witch City Mall. All right, first up, international monster museum.
lot of places closed for some reason. We don't know why. I mean, maybe because it's Sunday. Is it a Massachusetts thing? In a tourist destination like Salem, you'd think everything would be open on weekends, long hours. But alas, not here. Not here in Salem. Next up, a haunted house. Which mansion? It looks like it's done by the same people of the museum we were just in. My stomach is eating itself, so we're gonna stop into Village Tavern and grab some lunch. The menu looked good, I looked it up, and TripAdvisor says it's number two place to eat in all of Salem. So we'll judge for ourselves. stumble. <laughs> All right, what'd you think? Uh, well, we did the two haunted attractions. Yeah, so we did International the... Monster Museum mm -hmm. and then Witch Mansion Haunted House. So we could I... not film in the haunted house. But, but we filled the monster. Yes. And I thought it was really neat. It was detailed. Um, the haunted house I liked. It's dark. There's these things that hang and it just kind of freaks out because shit's in your face. Yeah, it was oh. similar to... Super short. Similar to some of the Dorney Park ones where you yeah. are distracted. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's noises in one direction and then there's things jumping out in another direction, which I like. So it was um, effective. I think I like the haunted house more just because I like to be scared. Yeah. One thing did get me in there. What? I forget what it was, but it's in the video because I probably flinched with the camera. In the haunted house? Yeah, so it was at the very end. It was really dark, so at one point I didn't know which way to go. And Albert's like, oh, yeah. go this way. <laughs> well, because there was like a body hanging and you literally had to duck under it. Oh. And I was like, you have to go. I didn't know what it was at first. I thought it was like bats, but it was then once I got past it, I saw its butt and it's like a dude hanging from the ceiling, shaking. All right, fair enough. But uh, yeah, I like liked both attractions. So they I have think the fun. first one we paid 30, so 15 each. And then the second one was like 25. Now, for both. Jerky paid for the second one. I looked down and it said, visit both attractions, two for the price of one. And nobody offered us that yeah. um and it was after we paid for the second one i saw that sign so just a heads up yeah if you're um, gonna if do, you do both. it ask if they do have that special um two for one because we ended up paying a lot more oh thank you nice pickle chips. pickle chips have arrived so you all know if you watch our channel what will you think of pickle chips and i'm picky about my pickle chips don't she's mind. not so much i don't like salty pickle yeah, chips so we're gonna find out mm. real quick they smell where good. these rank um i'm gonna be honest i'm a little nervous about the way the ranch looks so i think walk on so far was the best hmm. not bad they're a lot like walk ons oh good mm -hmm. all right food's here uh i'll let you guess what we got <laughs> Same I mean, thing first of all, um, I made like a non binding rule of eating lobster every day while we're here. Did starting we, today. Uh, I was going to say, we didn't have any yesterday. No, because this that was, massive. I wasn't including yesterday. That was like travel day. Dude, this looks so perfectly like mm -hmm. yummy. Yeah. That's so, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't even know how you eat it. I don't know if I'm going to finish mine to be able to finish yours. So I'm just going to eat, I want a little oh, yeah. piece of this, but I just want to eat the lobster. Ready? I don't want to eat the end because that just looks like a waste. Mm -hmm. 
and it's not over mayonnaised. When we saw the ingredients, we thought maybe it'd be like a lobster salad, but it's not. It's like big chunks. Yeah, at least we can like at least get some really good because there's seasonings in it too, not just. So you taste the celery at first. Celery is a very prominent flavor when it's in something, um, in my opinion. But uh, you can definitely, once you chew, taste the lobster for sure. So I looked this up on TripAdvisor for best lobster rolls on Essex Street, which is where we're at. And this was number two. Although it did say Turner Seafood, which isn't technically on Essex, so maybe it just did yeah, in all of Salem, which would be even bigger if this was number two in all of Salem. These are truffle fries. Yeah. They're really truffle, delicious. Truffle, butter, Parmesan. Like garlic. 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 <laughs> From Boston. Mm. They're good. I'm not going to eat roll first. I'm going to eat a little piece of lobster first, or maybe two pieces of lobster first. Mm. What were the seasonings? It I was uh, onion. I don't think they're white onion, but it's definitely red onion. Celery. Yeah, I mean, I didn't get a piece of celery, so I didn't taste that primarily, but whatever seasonings are in this, it's really good. What the look again? I mean, Lobster by itself is obviously good, but if you want something with more, more flavor, mm -hmm. this is the way to go. It's massive. Yeah, let me try to get some roll with it. Massive. Can you taste like the butter on the roll? Like, because I see the butter on that yeah. roll. The roll is not, I mean, the salad's cold. Some people serve lobster rolls warm or cold. Mm -hmm. This is a cold option, but the roll is still slightly warm. But yeah, uh, you taste the butter. This is excellent. Yay! Charlie Depot, anything that says a strange little store, we're gonna have to check out. I like these prints a lot, these old school looking for uh, homage to other artists. You told me about her, I didn't know what she looked like. I didn't know what she looked like. It's the October House 1031 art prints. These are really cool. Next stop, Dr. Orlock's Nightmare Alley. If you're a horror fan, I heard it's good. So what did you think? I really liked it. The things were really Yeah, the detail. Realistic. You could not detail. photograph or video record, no, but I'll find good. some stuff online and just put it in yeah. so you can get a sense of it. But if you're a it's horror good. movie fan, definitely yeah. do definitely. not miss Count Orlock's Albert Nightmare every Gallery. One. Like every single oh, yeah. one. He's like, we're, this, we're pressed for this. time, but I could have stayed an hour in there. Yeah. <laughs> we're checking out the Witch Dungeon Museum next. It's a little bit of a walk from uh, the rest of yeah. the attractions in Salem. But they got these gallows to check out. Wait. 
Okay, stay there, I'll be back. I'll let you know how it is. Oh, this is probably what would have happened to me if I lived back then. I think you would have been hung. I think so too, they'd be like, she's weird. She's a witch. <laughs> All right, we just left the Witch Dungeon Museum. We only could take photos in there, so I'll put them in as we're talking, but <clears throat> what do you think? It was I loved historical, it. the accuracy of like the sizes of the dungeons. Oh my gosh. And it was uh, pretty creepy down there. I can't even. <clears throat> like that one where that girl was? Yeah, the so, tiny, like, tiny confined so space. Many. And like the families would pay for like better treatment. Yeah, a little better orders. treatment. Yeah, if you were more wealthy, you could afford better treatment for your family member in the dungeon. So awful. So if you're poor, well, just like today, you get the short end of the stick, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, there was a beam though, an original beam. Yeah, that was so cool. From the original dungeon that they had preserved and that was down there. The reenactment of part of the trial too. I mean, all of it is insightful. I think the most historical stuff I liked was the information leading up to the witch trials. Like yeah. how yeah, the town was divided, you know, there was yeah. no leadership. There was like, you know, a um, ordained minister who was, or, or a minister I should say, who was not ordained acting as a minister mm -hmm. for, the, the, for the town and uh, the divisions that were created. And then all the animosity building up mm -hmm. and leading to accusations. It kind of sounded familiar. Yep. Like how people hey. still act today. So they found about a year and a half ago a, a name of a, a lady that was accused of witchery. And just three weeks ago, yeah. three weeks ago in 2022, her name was clear. Yeah, the name was found a year and a half and it took all the way till three weeks ago to clear. But the thing is like, they shouldn't even need to be cleared because no. they weren't witches. It's exactly. not even true. It's like. Yeah, they were accused, and they're, I guess, taking the accusation away, but uh, it's just sad that you have to even go through all that. You still see it to this day, human nature. It's really yeah. humans. And their, Throwing each other yeah, under the bus. Humans and their schemes and, uh, you know, dishonesty just ruins pretty much everything. Uh, we're going to head to, the, I think it's the last museum of the day, the True Salem Witch Museum in the castle-looking building. I really hope it's good because my head is set that it's good, so I hope I'm not disappointed. <laughs> the Salem Witch Museum examines one of the most enduring and emotional events in American history, the Salem Witch Trials of 1692. The museum consists of two presentations. The first provides an immersive look into the events of 1692. Visitors experience the drama of that dark time through 13 life-size stage sets, figures, lighting, and narration as they are witness to the web of lies and intrigue of the Salem Witch Hunt. Our second exhibit, Witches, Evolving Perceptions, explores the meaning behind the word witch and evolution of the image of the witch over time. This presentation focuses on the European witch trials and the background leading to the Salem Witch Trials. In addition, this presentation discusses the emergence of the stereotypical witch and the phenomenon of witch hunting. All right, we got through a bunch of museums, but now we are making our way back to Kakawa Chocolate House because they had some kind of like neat looking elixirs. We're gonna check it out. Just a quick scope of inside. It's a small place, but they have all kinds of candies in your menu for your drinks, chocolates, homemade ice cream in the back. This is dark chocolate. What is that? Oh, it's candied bacon, chocolate covered candy bacon. Uh huh. There's a piece of chocolate over in that other bin called Goat's Milk Sage. <laughs> I kind of want to get it just to have our try it. To mm, talk. I will. I but. won't. Usually, chocolate covered bacon is determined by the quality of the bacon mm -hmm. okay. if it has good flavor or not. Mm -hmm. Definitely taste bacon. Okay, I'll taste that. I'm going to bite the other end because. Well, that has all the bacon. I know. I'm not a fan of chocolate covered bacon because I would rather just have bacon and then, or just chocolate. I've only really had that like three times because I've been disappointed. Yeah, me too. This is probably... I've only had it once, but it wasn't good. Yeah, still... Meh. Fan of rum. Fan of rum. Which it's has... 70% chocolate. We're going to go on citrus and rum. It's a bit sour because of the citrus. Oh. So you definitely need like have to like citrus to get like this. I mean, I like it. It's good. You want to taste this one before I taste the Jefferson? Mm -hmm. No, taste the Jefferson. Okay. 
Jeffersonian, this one was a 7% chocolate. Organic. Almond milk. <laughs> Almond milk. And nutmeg. Now they said the nutmeg flavor is supposed to be prominent. Mm. Is it? I love nutmeg. I hope you, you can, can get these hot or cold. I Obviously it's hot out, so we got cold. I'm really hoping but yeah, I really like this one. that you can Hold taste on. more nutmeg than chocolate. It's like an even combination. Like, this does not taste like a chocolate drink to me. As odd as that is, it like you get an aftertaste of chocolate, but you don't get like oh. a Hershey's chocolate syrup. I'll let you know. You don't get that taste because it's real 70% chocolate. But this one definitely better than this one. But I'll finish both for sure. Oh, that one Jefferson. is the Havana. No. Oh, Havana rum. Havana rum oh. has two chocolate or what? I think so. I don't like it. Hmm. It's not like strong nutmeg, but it's definitely, you can definitely taste it. Okay. This one's That's better. Palatable, but like you're so expecting. So it's like this granular taste. Yeah. That's what, they sell bags of it, of their different flavors of chocolates. And it's like ground fine chocolate, almost this, like a ground coffee bean. It tastes creamier, if that makes sense. Yeah. You're expecting um, like a cheap Hershey's chocolate syrup flavor. Yeah, so this one's definitely better. Um, I think it's a texture thing for me too. Hmm. So it's good. I, I would drink it if I had to drink it, but I'm not going to. I'm going to let Albert have them. So I looked up online real quick. This company is based in Santa Fe, New Mexico, but here is the information for the location here in Salem. And you can order product online, but right now, because of how hot it is in the United States, everything's on hold, so they will not ship right now. But if you're interested, check them out because I like the elixirs. She does not. So there is bags of their flavored chocolate. It's like buying ground coffee, but it's just buying ground chocolate with all the different flavors to make your own elixirs and hot chocolates at home. So here's a fun historical fact I just came across. This Liberty Tree and plaque were dedicated on Patriot's Day 1976 to the memory of Benjamin Pierce A. Baker, the only Salem Miniman killed on April 1975. Now, my only question is, this is the Liberty Tree? Wouldn't it be bigger than this if it was planted in 1976? That's the only question I have. There's no way. We are stopping at Hotel Salem because there's a rooftop bar and small plates. Mm -hmm. We're gonna grab something to eat and check it out. Yep. What's it called? The roof. Hopefully it's not on fire. The Hotel Salem. It doesn't the look roof. like doesn't look like it. The roof, it's safe. The roof. The roof is on fire. Shot of the menu, small plates. What did you get? I got the steak nachos with me. extra queso. EV will scamper. Alrighty. That's what we're having. And this, this. That's an orange blossom. Milagro Silver Tequila Saint Elder Blood Orange Liqueur. It is good. Is that a blood orange? Mm hmm. I got extra queso because I feel like when you get nachos, they never put enough cheese. Oh, so that's the extra on the side. Yeah. Normally it doesn't come with that. No. Yeah. I, I, yeah, you see a little bit on there, but it smells delicious. I didn't notice that for a second. Did you taste okay. the steak? Yeah, the steak is delicious, so I'm going to be eating the nacho, but mostly steak. Mm -hmm. That's good. Can I have one photo series mm -hmm. on my phone from... Uh... I like it. Let's just take a moment to recognize that and like, just I am feeling that margarita. <laughs> 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 
We have um, not gotten you have a sip? They don't listen. They don't skip on their drinks here. Well, let me tell you. All right. It's so cold. So what do you think of the roof? Um. I actually <laughs> sippy fill, sip sip. I fill my drink back up with some water to make it last longer. Um, the okay. nachos were good. The steak was delish. It was good and it was fun. It was nice views. Yeah. It was relaxing. And our waiter could be Carter, I think could Carter. be Colin. Pretty sure Carter. Could be Caleb. Begins with um, a C. Super nice guy. Super nice. Goes to college in Indiana or Illinois? Indiana for Arabic and international studies. So shout out to him because he's making something of himself. Good job, Carter. And working Caleb, while he's Colin. doing it. Well, we found Proctor's Ledge. I am so excited. On Pope Street. I'm kind of sad. Well, this is I, sad. It's depressing, but I'm excited. Because Pope I didn't Street. Think we'd be able to find it. We're a little uphill from that Walgreens parking lot down there. So the know. names of all the accused witches that weren't even witches. Each one has a marker and a light. This wasn't until 2016 when they verified the actual area that the hangings took place. So this memorial was set up in 2017, right off of Pope Street. A little memorial. Reading about it online, they did not want to make a giant memorial and create a huge tourist attraction on such a small road behind a Walgreens. So this is what they came up with. Yeah, the third week of every month, what the, they called lecture day or le lecture week in the town when they proclaimed who all was going to awesome. die or be hanged. So the dates in each month is typically the third week of the month. So July, August, September, done. That's ridiculous. Goodbye Cabot Lodge, a very nice boutique hotel in the downtown Beverly. I just wanted to get a shot of the mural over there on that wall. That's beautiful. And we got our Kathmandu coffee, cinnamon craze, also awesome, just like yesterday morning. Butterscotch drizzle. And so we're off to Booth Bay Harbor, whale watching. Can't wait. After three and a half hour drive. Can't wait for the drive. I can't wait for the whales. <laughs> I don't like the drive. Oh, I need to get my book out. I'm gonna read my book. You're gonna sleep in like two minutes. Probably. <laughs> And that's going to wrap up our time in Salem, Massachusetts. We really enjoyed our time in Salem. The only thing I wish we would have done is given ourselves more time. So if you do plan on going to Salem, definitely give yourselves maybe a day and a half, two full days. As we were planning our trip, you know, we kept adding things. We ended up adding the Boston stop. We added the Booth Bay stop. So it kind of just took away time from Salem. There are so many other museums and things to do there that I wish we would have had a day and a half to two days to experience more of it. Another thing we missed was our chance to get back to Odd Meter Coffee to try their Kyoto style coffee so chances are we would have been able to get back there even if it was the next day but alas we only had one full day so we made the best of it we have plenty of videos coming out yet from our five day New England adventure so subscribe below and follow along and as always thanks for watching until next time last tag <laughs>